Hey, what is up, everybody? So I want to take a look at what Tony Romo had to say about the Packers. He talks about the defense, some schematic things as well. I also just put out a video on my second NFL channel breaking down the Robert Sala firing. If you want to watch that, I'm going to leave it linked in the description down below as well as at the end of this video. So if you're into non-Packers NFL content, feel free to check out my second channel. So here is Tony Romo and his thoughts on the Packers. Well, I think the big key was the two turnovers in the second half. I mean, the defense did an outstanding job for Green Bay. And like you guys talked about McKinney, Wilson came to him today in that second <laughs> half. And uh, that's a football for everybody. We call it the Wilson football. But I do think that uh, they just have a really unique gift at coming out in the second half and changing a few things to overload a defense or put them in a position that's very uncomfortable. And so I think teams are going to have to figure out when the Packers come out after halftime, they're coming out with a little bit of a new scheme. And so you might have to figure out a way to change up what you did in the first half because they've taken advantage of that now for years. And uh, today, I mean, it's just the ball. It just mattered. And that's why the Rams won the first half because of the ball and the pick six. And then Green Bay wins the second half because of it. And that really is the difference. And give Jordan Love credit for mentally staying in it and coming back and just calming everything down and taking advantage of his opportunities. Yeah, so bringing up the fact the second half, this is the same thing that happened last week in a game against the Vikings where the Vikings put up 28 points in the first half and then the Packers defense comes in the second half, pretty much pretty much completely shuts things down, only allowing three points in the second half. A similar thing happened against the Rams where the Rams put up 13 in the first half, obviously not as bad as last week. It's not the same caliber offense, especially with lots of the weapons the Rams are missing and then the Rams only put up six points in the sec second half so that's been pretty promising to see just how this defense under Jeff Halfley has really bounced back and really played at a much higher level coming into the second half and the turnovers you know in the second half with the Xavier McKinney interception same thing happened the week before the Packers have really turned things around in the third quarter and that's where things completely turned around against the Rams with the interceptions turning into two Tucker Craft touchdowns, which pretty much sealed the game for the Packers. And when you look at this Jeff Halfley defense, we obviously you're trying to compare it to Joe Barry and what happened there in Green Bay. And the question, you know, right now, five weeks in is, are we seeing a better defense than we did under Joe Barry? And I think just for the fact of the turnovers that have, you know, come from the defense, that, that in itself, I think, is the ultimate upgrade over Joe Barry, where last year the Packers were 23rd in the NFL in the regular season in takeaways per game at 1.1. Right now, the Packers are first in the NFL at takeaways per game at 2.8. So that completely changes a team right now with 1.7 takeaways more per game through five weeks. That, that changes everything. And it may not reflect as much, you know, just when it comes to points allowed because right now the Packers defense is 14th in points allowed or sorry 14th in yeah defensive points allowed at 21.6 last year they were 10th under Joe Barry but when you're constantly forcing turnovers that's going to reflect in what the offense is able to do because clearly you have more possessions when you oh, the defense is getting takeaways which is going to reflect itself in the Packers and their their points and, and things like that obviously when you get an interception and it gets returned a little bit. You get better field position. And so the Packers right now, eighth best scoring offense with 25.6 points per game. And I think part of that does have to do with the Packers defense giving this offense more and more opportunities. So, so far, just because of turnovers, I would say this is a better defense than last year. Most of it comes down to Xavier McKinney. If the Packers had Jeff Halfley but didn't have Xavier McKinney, I still think they would be forcing turnovers, but I do not think it would be at this insane rate that we've seen with Xavier McKinney having five straight games with an interception, which is just wild. And so if we would have had, you know, Darnell Savage back there, Rudy Ford back there, uh, Jonathan Owens, I think we'd still be seeing some turnovers, but it wouldn't be the same just because of how talented Xavier McKinney is. He's pretty much been the best safety in the NFL so far this season. So a incredible signing by Brian Gudikins and the Packers. Here's some more from Romo. Myself, much like you were never far from a thought or a swing on a golf course and I don't know if you remember last year there was a conversation of whether a player is an artist or a mechanic it feels like these two quarterbacks are certainly in the artist vein can you draw through lines from a young quarterback to a veteran that you saw on the same field today I'm impressed with Jordan Love's ability to calm the game down and he looks very calm back in the pocket and 
you know, the Rams actually do a pretty good job of creating pressure on the quarterbacks. He has to throw under duress a little bit, but the, the Packer plan made the game simple for them, and then you just need to create the big drive that took off the seven minutes where it came down to just to play like that instead of the Rams getting another series after that opportunity was the, the using his legs and just understanding situational football. And I think the Packers are really growing in that area. I mean, you've got a lot of young players on both these teams, and the Rams will be much better later. But right now the Packers are well ahead of them just with the guys who know what their responsibility is, play in, play out. Yeah, exciting to watch this talent. So what Romo brought up there about Jordan Love and his mentality um, and sort of staying calm after turnovers, that is something that is, I mean, when you when you have a quarterback who has thrown a lot of interceptions as Jordan Love has so far this season, um, you know, especially that pick six last week, it was a tough one because he was getting sacked in the end zone, didn't want a safety, so he's probably a little bit more, you know, unsafe with the ball just because, you know, you're going to give up two points if he holds onto that ball. So it's like you don't want him to hold onto it, but at the same time, you don't want him just throwing a pick six. And right now, if you look at interceptions, he's sixth in the NFL at five. And that's only playing in three games where most of these other guys have played in five. So that's obviously a problem for Love. Luckily, he's able to turn things around. Last week versus the Vikings, started to play a lot better. Still putting the ball in harm's way a bit. But this week after throwing that pick six, came out the second half, dominated. And so when you have a guy throwing a lot of turnovers, you would at least hope that he can come back in and not allow that to, to sort of hold him back and mentally mess him up. And it doesn't seem like it really does at all. And that's one thing Brian Gudikins had talked on for years about Jordan Love is his ability, you know, mentally just to stay calm at all times, not get too high, not get too low. That's really what you need from a quarterback who is going to make bad plays from time to time. And the question is, is that going to affect them going forward? Are they going to play differently because they threw an interception or a pick six? Or can they come back out as if it didn't happen? And it sounds, or it seems like Jordan Love is able to do that. Talent, bud, and see what it might look like down the road, not just in this season, but in seasons to come. Let's remain focused on this season, because I know at the end of the broadcast, you guys are talking about uh, what used to be the black and blue NFC North, now very multiple in the way that those teams might beat you. Just in terms of the teams that you're looking at, and it's going to be beautiful to watch it play out in real time on a field, but who do you give the advantage to when you look at these rosters the way they're constructed? Well, until someone beats Minnesota, you're yeah. going with them. However, Green Bay has a ceiling that's right near anybody else's. I feel like not everyone understands the depth at wide receiver when they're all healthy. They were down two guys today. But now you bring Kraft in, who's a really unique tight end and has a skill set, run after catch, but also running routes. He's just a really well-rounded player. You got Josh Jacobs in the backfield with a good offensive line. I mean, that's a formidable unit that can win any game at, just by themselves. And then the system on defense. I really like the defensive coordinator, uh, ex-head coach at Boston College, Jeff. He's, he's come in and changed the system completely. So that takes time. But I saw them kind of start to get a little bit better. They used leverage and angles better today than they did last week, same as the week before. So this, this full team, I think, has the ability to possibly be the standard at the end of the year. But right now it's Minnesota. All right. All right, sort of hard to argue that Minnesota is, you know, probably one of the best teams in the league when they're one of the only undefeated 5-0 and best team in the NFC North. And if you look at the NFC North, the Packers are currently in last place because the Bears are 3-2, and just as the Packers are. The Lions are 3-1 and after having a bye. The Vikings are 5-0. and But I do think, as time goes by, Romo brought up the fact that this is a, a defense with a new defensive coordinator. So you would assume that, you know, 10, 15 weeks in, they're going to have a better you know, grasp of the defense and how things are going. Plus, once Jair gets back healthy, once Devontae Wyatt is back healthy, things should improve a little bit, I think, for the Packers when you get your your best cornerback back in the room. But, you know, when we look at, at teams, you know, when it comes to contenders and playoffs and things like that, the question is, you know, can, can your team go on a run in the playoffs and, you know, win those three games, get to a Super Bowl, do they have that ability? And I think the Packers 100% do. The defense, if they continue to force turnovers at this rate, the offense playing as well as they have, eighth best scoring offense, even missing Jordan Love for two weeks. I think that once Dobbs is back, Christian Watson is back, and Jordan Love continues to get into more of a rhythm, playing on offense after getting back from his MCL sprain, that this is a group that is one of the best in the NFL, I would say, just from top to bottom overall. And... I do expect them to get better as the, the season progresses. And one thing, too, to touch on before we finish, Jeff Halfley and his defense, 
the talk of the offseason was that he's going to bring a, a more aggressive approach. And he hasn't really brought a lot of blitzes from a overall standpoint. The Packers have the, uh, when it comes to how often the Packers blitz the quarterback, ranked among other defenses per NFL Pro, they are currently 29th in blitz percentage at 19.1%. But when they do blitz, they have the highest pressure percentage in the NFL at 59%. So it looks to me like Jeff Halfley is pretty particular about when he does want to blitz, when he does want to bring extra linebackers to blitz like Quay Walker, Edron Cooper, two guys who I think are really good when they are blitzing the quarterback. He's, he's pretty particular about when he does it, and it works at a very, very high level, the highest in the NFL when he does blitz. So even though we may not see it all the time, it's at 19.1%. When, it, when he does it, it does work, and he's done it a lot on third downs, big situations like that. The end of the game last week when Matthew Stafford was standing back there, they had to get a first down. They blissed on that one. Edron Cooper was flying in unblocked, and Evan Williams had great coverage on uh, the guy he was covering. So that blitz worked there. Perfect call at a perfect time for Jeff Halfley. So that is one, I'd say, really bright spot about this, this Packers team and this Packers defense. But if you want more Packers content, subscribe down below. Here's a video from earlier today on the Jets firing Robert Sala. So I touch on that. And if you want more NFL content, you can subscribe to that channel over there. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.